Welcome to an application of surface area that requires the use of fractions. A tank shown is to be fabricated from steel plate. The specifications call for a three gauge plate, which is approximately one fourth of an inch thick. Number one, we want to determine the number of square feet of plate needed to construct the tank, which should be the surface area of the tank. And then number two, if three gauge steel plate weighs nine and a half pounds per square foot, we want to determine the weight of the tank. Let's begin by considering the key components of our tank. First, notice how both ends are circles, here as well as here, and the diameter of the tank is two and one-third feet. So let's let D be equal to two and one-third feet, but let's write this as an improper fraction. Two and one-third as an improper fraction, we still have a denominator of three, and then to find the numerator, we would multiply three and two, three times two is six, and then add the numerator, that would be seven. Two and one-third is seven-thirds, so the diameter is seven-thirds feet. We also need to find the radius, which is the length of the segment from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, which is half of the diameter. So we can say R for radius is equal to one-half times the diameter of seven-thirds. Nothing simplifies here, so we multiply the numerators and denominators to get seven six feet. And then finally, notice how the length of the tank from here to here is twelve and one fourth feet. So let's use L for length, which is twelve and one fourth feet. We also want to write this as an improper fraction, so the denominator stays four. We have four times twelve is forty-eight plus one, that's forty-nine fourths feet. So now we want to find the surface area of this tank, and to do this, we're going to cut this tank into three pieces to better visualize how to find the surface area. We already noticed that both ends of the tank are circles, and the area of a circle is equal to area equals pi r squared. So to find the surface area, we'll have to find the area of these two circles, and then if we cut the tank along this length here, and then unfold this piece, it would be a rectangle that looks like this, where this length here would be this side of the rectangle, and then this side of the rectangle would actually come from the perimeter or the circumference of this circle here. And to find the perimeter or circumference of the circle, we use the formula two times pi times r, but since two times r is equal to the length of the diameter, we can also use pi times d. So to find the surface area, we want to sum the area of these three shapes. And there is one more thing that we're going to do. For pi, which is an irrational value, we're going to use the fraction 22 sevenths as an approximation. So to find the surface area of the tank, we'd have two times pi r squared. This would give us the area of these two circles, and then plus the area of this rectangle, which would be pi times d times l. So now using the dimensions we found on the previous slide, we'll go ahead and find the surface area. So again, here's our formula to find the surface area. So now we'll perform substitutions for the given values. Because we are using an approximation for pi, the surface area is going to be approximately equal to the sum of these two products. So we'll have two, which write as two over one, times pi, which we're approximating using 22 sevenths times r squared, that would be seven six squared, plus pi, again, 22 sevenths times d, seven thirds, times l, 49 fourths. The units will be square feet, which we'll include at the end. So next, We'll go ahead and square seven six by squaring seven and squaring six. So we'd have two over one times twenty two sevenths times that'd be forty nine thirty six plus the same product. And now we'll find these products and then find the sum. But before we multiply, we do want to simplify any common factors between the numerators and denominators. Notice here seven and forty nine share a common factor of seven. There's one seven and seven, and seven sevens and forty-nine. Twenty-two and thirty-six share a common factor of two. There are eleven twos and twenty-two. 
and 18 twos and 36. Notice how two and 18 also share a common factor of two. There's one two and two and nine twos and 18. Let's go ahead and find this first product. We have one times 11 times seven, that's 77. In the denominator we have one times one times nine, which is nine. Now let's simplify before we find the second product. Again, seven and 49 share a common factor of seven. There's one seven and seven, and seven sevens and 49. Four and 22 share a common factor of two. There's two twos and four, and 11 twos and 22. Now we can go ahead and multiply. Notice the denominator would be one times three times two, that's six. The numerator would be 11 times seven, that's 77 times seven is 539. And now to find this sum, we do have to obtain a common denominator, which is the least common multiple of nine and six, which would be 18. So to obtain a common denominator of 18, we have to multiply this first fraction by two over two. Notice that nine times two is 18. We have to multiply the second fraction by three over three. Notice that six times three is also 18. So now we would have a denominator of 18, and the numerator would be 77 times two, that's 154, plus 539 times three, which is 1,617, giving us 1,771 eighteenths square feet. But let's also give this as a mixed number before we check this on the calculator. To convert to a mixed number, we have to perform this division. We have to divide 1,771 by 18. So let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. We first want to determine how many 18s are on 177. I believe there's nine. Nine times eight is 72. Carry a seven to the tens. Nine times one is nine plus seven is 16. As long as this difference is less than 18, this nine is correct. Seven minus two is five, seven minus six is one. Notice 15 is less than 18, so the nine is correct. Bring down the next digit of one. Now we want to determine how many 18s are on 151. I believe that's eight. Eight times eight is 64. We carry a six to the tens. Eight times one plus six is 14. Our difference here is seven which means this is equal to 98 and 7 eighteenths. So going back to the previous slide, we can say the surface area is also equal to 98 and 7 eighteenths square feet. Remember this is an approximation because 22 sevenths is an approximation for pi. Before we go on and find the weight though, let's go ahead and check our surface area calculation. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in this first line here and verify our solution. So we have two times 22 sevenths times seven six squared plus 22 sevenths times seven thirds times 49 fourths. And enter. Notice this gives us a decimal approximation. If we enter to two decimal places, this would be approximately 98.39 square feet. To convert to a fraction, we press math, enter, enter, verifying that our solution is correct. 1,771 eighteenths. But again, if we were asked to round to two decimal places, we could say the surface area is approximately 98.39 square feet. Now to finish, we want to find the weight of the tank, and we're told that the weight is nine and a half pounds per square feet. So we'll take the surface area here and multiply by nine and a half. So again, the weight is gonna be equal to the surface area, which was square feet, times the weight per square feet, which was nine and a half pounds per square feet. 
Notice here the units of square feet simplify out, leaving us with the weight in pounds. Let's go ahead and convert nine and a half to an improper fraction. Denominator stays two. Two times nine plus one is nineteen. Again, this is pounds. Nothing simplifies here, so multiply the numerators and denominators together. Eighteen times two is thirty-six. One thousand seven hundred seventy-one times nineteen is equal to thirty-three thousand six hundred forty-nine. Running short on time, we can go ahead and perform division here to find the mixed number. It would come out to nine hundred thirty-four and twenty-five thirty-six pounds. Let's go to the calculator and verify this product. Notice this gives us a decimal approximation. Again, to two decimal places, or the hundredths place value, this would be approximately 934.69 pounds. But to verify our fractional answer, we'll go ahead and press math, enter, enter, verifying that our product is correct. So we found the amount of steel required to construct the tank, as well as how much the tank would weigh if we use three gauge steel. I hope you found this explanation helpful.